Hi everyone, how is it going? Over the past weekend, I went to the Edinburgh Book Festival, which I've not been to for several years uh, because it's always really difficult to find accommodation in Edinburgh during the month of August because not just the book festival is going on there, but there's also the Fringe Festival, um, which involves a lot of comedy and theater and dance and performance pieces. It's just like a big massive arts festival over the entire month. Um, but I had some friends who very cannily um, booked an Airbnb right in the center of Edinburgh over uh, this past weekend and they booked it way back in November because um, you have to book it way in advance. And uh, so yeah, so I went this year and of course I couldn't go to a book festival without buying some books while I was there. Um, so I want to talk about uh, those and some other books um, that are being published this month that I'm really interested in reading. Uh, but before I talk about all of those, I have to talk about a new t-shirt that I have, a new bookish t-shirt I have, because we all love a bookish t-shirt. And I bought this recently after watching a booktube video um, by Claudia over at her booktube channel, Spinster's Library, uh, which I really enjoy watching. And uh, this is the cutest t-shirt. I'll try to get up and show it without uh, knocking over the camera. Um, so this is a picture of Dorian Gray t-shirt, um, but done with cats. And so there's the one cat looking all handsome while his um, counterpart is stuck in the picture looking all decrepit and old. And uh, yeah, and has a quote on it, um, which, you know, I'm all for sort of like, self-empowerment, self-acceptance, but, uh, but you know, quite often I wish I was somebody else too, so I can, you know, relate to that sentiment. Um, so yeah, so she made this hilarious video because um, she, she set up um, her own shop um, selling these uh, book and cat merchandise things because they're her two biggest interests and, uh, and her, it, the beginning of her video is hilarious. I'll link it down below so you can go see. Um, but yeah, just go watch that if, if anything else. She also made some other um, t-shirts in cats in different classic novels um, series. So really fun to look at. And uh, yeah, I just, I, it just, uh, I just thought it was so um, cute and creative. And, and uh, yeah, so had to buy my own t-shirt. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to show that off. Um, so. At the, uh, the book festival, very close to where the book festival is held in um, Edinburgh, in Charlotte Square, um, there's a bookshop. Um, you have to go down quite a steep hill. Um, there's, Edinburgh's a very hilly city. Um, and uh, you go down a very steep hill to Golden Hair Bookshop, which is a really beautiful uh, boutique bookshop. Um, you know, it's one of these bookshops that you can just tell it's like very carefully curated, that all the books are laid out really beautifully and you can tell that they were selected by the booksellers to be there and um, and so while I was there uh, a wonderful thing happened when I was in the bookshop I ran into the author Rowan Buchanan um, whose uh, whose novel uh, Starling Days I just read recently and you know who's an author I really like and so yeah I was and I've met her a few times before so it was really wonderful to bump into her and have a little bit of a chat um, but then also while I was in the bookshop I bought um, the new short story uh, called Europa by Han Can, uh, tra translated by Deborah Smith. And, uh, and it seems like appropriate. Um, the couple books that I got at the book festival are books by Woman in Translation because it's uh, Woman in Translation Month. And, uh, and I think I've read all of Han Can's books that have been translated into English. There's been three, right? Yeah, and I've read all three and I just adore her. I mean, she, her, her writing is so creative and um, yeah, each book is really different from the other. And so uh, this, this short story sounds really interesting too. Uh, it's, um, it's about a woman who uh, leaves a marriage um, under sort of violent circumstances and about her, how she's um, walking through a city with a man um, who has for a long time craved to live as a woman. And I think about their conversation with each other. And so, um, yeah, it's just a short story I'm really interested in reading and publish. I love how um, they, they, um, they publish this too. So you can see on the inside flap of one side, you can see a bio of Han Can. And then on the inside flap of the other side, you can see a bio of Deborah Smith. And, um, and uh, this is published, I think, by Tilted Access Press, isn't it? Or is it? 
published by the University of East Anglia Press. I'm not sure if they're one in the same, but, um, but anyway, Deborah Smith actually started Tilted Access Press to publish more books in translation in the UK. But uh, anyway, yeah, very eager to read this short story. And then I also went to an event um, that was uh, with both the, the author, Zinzi Clemens, and uh, Mirin Agar Meeb. Uh, and uh, so I was keen to go to this event because I wanted to see Zinzi Clemens, whose novel I've not read yet, but uh, I got some time ago when um, my friend Christy bought this for me as a birthday present, uh, when um, my friend Christy is so wonderful. I've known her since I was a teenager, and we always send each other books for our birthdays. And um, by the way, it's my birthday soon again. Anyway, but, uh, but yeah, she, um, she sent me this novel some time ago, which I haven't got around to reading, but I wanted to hear Zinzi Clemens talk about it. And so went to her event, um, which was great and really interesting hearing her speak about it. But then also um, discovered this author, Mirin Agar Meeb, um, who's an author that writes in Catalan. And uh, this is a book called The... Um, a Glass Eye, and it's quite an unusual publication for her because um, she's mainly a poet and a writer of books for children, um, but this is a, a novel, but it's a very autobiographically inspired novel, and it's why um, the two authors were sort of paired together because they've both written very autobiographical novels, and, um, and this novel is uh, about her experiences um, sort of uh, mulling over the losses in her life, the, the loss of uh, a breakup of her marriage with her husband, the loss of her mother, and also the loss of one of her eyes. When um, she was younger, she, she lost one of her eyes um, and had a glass eye made as a replacement. And um, so she's talking about that, that process, but I knew I had to buy this book after, because um, I'm such a swat, I always ask questions of authors and at author readings. I, I'm, I'm one of, first ones that like puts my hand up and like, yeah, I want to ask a question. So I asked the authors about their influences. I mean, it's a very generic question about authors and books that have really influenced them. And she said as two of her biggest influences um, that she, she cited were Joyce Carol Oates and the French writer Annie Arnaud. And you know, I've just discovered Annie Arnaud's writing this year and love her. And so it's like, like what better way to sell a book? To me personally, I, I was just immediately like, yes, I have to buy this book. And um, yeah, and it sounds really interesting and innovatively written and great. And apparently it's strewn with literary references throughout. So, uh, so yeah, very eager to read this now. Also this month, um, are a bunch of really interesting novels that are being published. So the first is called Blueprint by Teresa Eisenberger. And uh, this takes place, this is about a, a group of characters um, amidst the Bauhaus movement in Berlin in the 1920s. And it's sort of all about that, that art house scene, which there's been another novel published recently by Naomi Wood, um, which is about that scene as well. So there's this sort of revival of interest of, um, I mean, it's a really interesting period of history of sort of artistic movement um, right before uh, you know, or amidst the rise of the Second World War and Nazism in, in Germany. So, uh, so yeah, this, this sounds very good and I'm keen to read this. Adrift in the Middle Kingdom by Jay Slahoff. And um, this is translated from the Dutch. And this is a novel which was actually written in the 19... 30s, and uh, it's published by Handheld Press, which is a really interesting um, independent publisher. Um, they publish a lot of good um, classic novels and give them um, these new covers and um, new editions. And, uh, and this novel is about a, um, a man who is traveling through uh, 1920s, through all the way from Shanghai to a forgotten city beyond the Great Wall of China. And it's exploring the, the opium trade during that time, which is always like really interesting, like high intrigue period, this, this sort of very lucrative opium trade, which um, obviously uh, a lot of people, um, ruined a lot of people's lives at the, as they got addicted to opium. And so, um, yeah, very keen to read this uh, short, translated novel from the 1930s. Then I have two novels, which I believe are both uh, sort of coming of age uh, novels about young women in New York City. And so the first is The Falconer by Dana Chapnick. And this is a novel about a, um, a young woman in the 1990s who uh, is more of a tomboy. Um, she's always been sort of more of a, a tomboy, but as she 
gets older and um, develops more of an interest in feminism. And so it's sort of about her journey and her coming of age. Um, I think it sounds really good. And uh, then there's the novel Devotion by Madeline Stevens, um, which has an amazing, beautiful cover. Um, I really don't like the US cover of this, but, um, but I love the, the cover of this. I, and, uh, and it's uh, about a young woman who is adrift in New York City and, and has uh, moved there from afar and is completely broke and desolate um, until she finds a job working as a nanny for this uh, well-to-do family and she sort of becomes ingrained within this family and becomes very attached to the mother of the family and is about the complications of um, their uh, their relationship with each other. It sort of sounds to me like a hand that rocks the cradle type scenario. I don't know if it's actually like that, but um, but yeah, it sort of sounds that way. But if it is like that, I'd be you know very keen to read it. This Mortal Boy by Fiona Kidman. This is a novel about a young man in New Zealand um, who I, I believe it's based off from a true story was one of the the last people to receive the death penalty in New Zealand. Um, so he's 20 years old and he gets involved in this altercation. Um, during which he, he murders another young man. And, um, and it stirs up a lot of anxiety of people in the country about um, young people sort of running wild. And, and, uh, and so as a stern punishment, several months after he, he, uh, he murders this young man, he's given the death penalty. So it explores that sort of issue of the death penalty um, in New Zealand. Next is a really beautiful new reprint that's, that's come out of a classic piece of nature writing and you know how I've been talking about recently that I really want to get into reading some more nature writing and this this book sounds amazing so it's by Nan Shepherd and it's called The Living Mountain and it's meant to be one of the greatest pieces of nature writing that has ever come out of the United Kingdom and I believe uh, Nan Shepherd wrote this early early in the, the 20th century, um, in the 1900s. Um, but, uh, but I think it, the manuscript of it lay dormant for like 30 years or so before it was finally published, and then it was published to great acclaim. And now it's being published in this new edition, which is really gorgeous and beautiful. Um, it's about her time uh, going up into the Scottish mountains and sort of meditating about the, the landscape there. And, uh, and this new edition has an introduction by Robert McFarlane, um, whose uh, work I've been talking about recently and an afterword by Jeanette Winterson, um, whose new novel I just read, finished reading um, the other day. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'm very eager to read this. It's just like such a beautiful, beautiful new edition of the book. And then I have a couple novels which are sort of based around the, the Cold War. Um, so the first is called The Red Daughter by John Burnham Schwartz. And this, this novel has an amazing premise. So um, it's based off from the true story about how Stalin, Joseph Stalin's only daughter moved to America in the 1960s undercover um, to make a new life for herself in America and sort of distance herself from the, the, the enormous weight of her father's past. And, um, and, and I believe that this actually happened. And the, the author, really fascinatingly, um, his father, um, was the, the lawyer responsible um, for helping smuggle her into the United States. I mean, this was done in cooperation with the CIA and to make a new life for herself in the United States. And so, um, yeah, she, she just wanted to sort of settle down and, and, and have a sort of normal suburban lifestyle um, living in America. And uh, so, yeah, he... Um, he goes into an account of all the, the complications of that. And uh, yeah, and obviously had a lot of access to um, this information because his father was so heavily involved with her, her moving to America. So, um, so yeah, it's um, so fascinating. It comes with quotes by um, Lauren Groff and Jennifer Egan on it, um, who, who really praise it. So, uh, so yeah, I think this sounds so fascinating. And then another novel, which is sort of all around the Cold War politics is um, this, this uh, new publication called Night and Day by Patrick Flannery, massive book, um, 650 page novel, um, all around the, the sort of scare in Hollywood around um, the, the time of the Cold War and, um, you know, people being um, sort of ratted out and, and accused of being communist within Hollywood during that time. So it's about a director and various people involved in Hollywood and, um, and who are involved in that whole sort of scandal and scene. And, and I've always wanted to write 
read more about that period because, um, yeah, it sounds so fascinating. So this is a really in-depth novel about that period. And you know I'm all about big books recently, so, uh, so this is a big book I'd like to sink my teeth into. Skin by E. M. Reapy. Um, this is a novel by an Irish uh, writer who has a very striking cover, and it's about a young woman's sort of coming-of-age story um, who's always felt very uncomfortable within her own skin and uh, with her her weight and just been felt very self-conscious and it's about her traveling to several different places around the world and uh, sort of dealing with this issue. It sounds like a very uh, moving and relatable novel. And then another book by an Irish writer, uh, Beyond the Sea by Paul Lynch, um, who I've never read before but is very acclaimed. Um, this. Um, this novel is about a uh, two men who travel out on a boat and get caught in the Pacific Ocean um, and are just sort of adrift and then, you know, dealing with that, that fact. And I'm always a sucker for, for stories about people who sort of become lost at sea. But, um, but I think, so this is dealing with the hard reality of that, but I think also becomes a sort of existentialist type novel. So, um, so this is a writer who's praised by, by Donald Ryan um, on the, the cover, um, but who um, also is praised by another Irish writer, Mary Costello. Um, if you've never read Mary Costello, she's amazing. Um, her, her novel, um, Academy Street, is is fantastic, and she calls this a powerful, heartbreaking story of friendship forged in the most extreme conditions. With its echoes of Greek myth, it yields up those small moments of grace that are deeply transformative. Next is a novel which is sort of difficult to summarize, I think, because the plot just sounds completely bonkers, but really interesting. Uh, it's A Superior Spectre by Angela Meyer, and this is a novel about a man named Jeff who moves to Scotland um, and who's very like labored with these feelings of shame. And But he gets a piece of technology which allows him to enter the minds of people in the past. And so I think he sort of enters the mind of a woman in the 1860s in Scotland and, and um, the, the minds of some other people. And so it's about sort of adventures of that. So it tells these people stories of these people from the past, but also melds it with his own consciousness. Um, yeah, it's a very curious sort of sounding novel. And then finally, I have another big chunkster of a book, uh, which is Berlin Finale by Heinz Rain. This is a novel which um, is being republished by, um, as, a, as a Penguin Modern classic, um, because it was first published in 1947, which is amazing because it's about the end of the Second World War. It takes place in 1945, and involves several characters, Germans who are involved in the Second World War and sort of scrambling to survive amidst um, the end of it. And uh, so it follows a number of those different characters' lives. Um, but yeah, it was published only two years after the, the end of that war, um, which is, yeah, just kind of amazing. So, and um, yeah, and I've, I've, like I, I've said before as well, that I always want to read more about Berlin and really interested to read more novels set in Berlin um, ever since I, I visited Berlin last year. Um, so those are all the books uh, that I want to talk about and that I've sort of uh, <laughs> newly got this month. Um, let me know if you're interested in reading any of these, which um, you think sound most intriguing, um, which you would like to read first, um, which ones you think I should read first. And uh, amidst all the other, you know, sort of Booker Prize reading and all of that and writing, reading for Women in Translation Month. But, uh, but yeah, I'm always really excited about new books that are coming out. So I uh, can't, can't, uh, can't help myself from being tempted from looking at them as well. So hope you're doing well and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.